have love in the home. You know, the question is, how do we get true love in the home? I encourage you to turn with me your Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. One book over, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, as we discover how we can be transformed into the lovely image of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. A familiar verse for many of us. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so this verse tells us that by beholding we become transformed, or could we say by beholding we become changed. You know, we perhaps know that already as well, right? But I believe that one of the reasons we are not completely transformed is because we do not understand how deep God's love is for us. We do not understand how deep God's love is for us. And you're saying, what are, you, what are you talking about, Brother Fultz? Because I know that Jesus died for me. I know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I know how deep his love is for me. You know, brothers and sisters, when I was reading the Bible recently, I just have to share these verses with you because by, we need to go a little bit deeper into the love of God because by beholding we become changed. Amen? Please turn with your Bibles to the book of Psalm chapter 40 as we understand just how deep God's love is for us. Just how deep? Psalm chapter 40 and verse 5. Psalm 40, verse 5. And when you're there, please say amen. All right. Psalm chapter 40 and verse 5 says, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak them, they are more than can be numbered. How high can you count? Billion? What comes after billion? Trillion, right? What comes after trillion? I have no idea, (laughs) right? You know, here, this, this verse right here, it says... Do you understand this verse? Let's read it one more time. It says, Many, O Lord, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak them, they are more than can be numbered. Do you understand, brothers and sisters, that God thinks about you so much that you cannot even count it? Have you ever been so in love with someone that you can't stop thinking about them? Do you know, brothers and sisters, that Jesus can't stop thinking about you? Amen? Amen. His thoughts towards us are so much that they cannot be numbered. And we think, Lord, maybe his thoughts towards us, he sees my sins. And Lord, I'm just, uh, I don't want him to think about me. But you know, the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 tells us that, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Do you understand how deep God's love is for you? Please go one book back to the book of Job chapter 7. By beholding the love of Jesus Christ, we become changed. One book back to the book of Job, chapter 7, as we discover just how deep God's love is for us. Amen? Job, chapter 7, and I'm going to start in verse 17. Job 7, 17. If you're not there yet, please say, have mercy. <laughs> all right, you're, you're all there, all right? Job, chapter 7, verse 17. The Word of God says, what is, this is Job speaking, by the way. He's a Holy man of God that was moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Job 7, 17 says, What is man that you should exalt him, that you should set your heart on him, that you should visit him every morning and test him every moment? You know, when you look at verse 17, it says that God sets his heart on you. You know what it means to set your heart on something? You know, people, they set their hearts on, they say, I must have this luxury car, I must have this big house, I've set my heart on this thing, I must have it. Do you know, brothers and sisters, that Jesus has not set his heart on the things of this world, but he set his heart on you? And so Jesus says, I must have you in my kingdom. I love you so much. And if you look in verse 18, it tells us that God visits us how many mornings? Every morning. Woo! Do you understand this? 
Isn't that exciting? No, Jesus visits you every morning, brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, am, am I the only one excited up here or what? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> all right, all right. So the first step in re- restoring our household is by beholding we become changed or transformed. And we just saw how deep God's love is for us. Amen? But you know, there's things that God wants us to do. And the book Adventist Home... Um, page 177, listen to this quote, brothers and sisters, so powerful. It tells us that how we can bring about restoration in our families. It says, the heart of his wife should be the grave for the faults of the husband. And the heart of the husband, the grave for his wife's faults. Never should either party indulge in a joke at the expense of the other's feelings. Never should either the husband or wife in sport or in any other manner, do what? Complain of each other to others. Mm. For frequent indulging in this foolish and what may seem perfectly harmless joking will end in trial with each other and perhaps in stranglement. She says, I have been shown that there should be a sacred shield around every family. You know, wow. (laughs) Never complain about your spouse to anyone else. Do you know that? Keep it in the home. Take it to Jesus. Amen? Um, Such a powerful quote. We need to take everything not to man, but to Jesus. By the way, um, there's another principle I want to show you. And I call it the beehive principle. The beehive principle. And it's found in the Bible. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been stung by a bee? It hurts, right? How many of you have been stung by a bee? All right. (laughs) You know, when you get stung by a bee, what you do not want to do is attempt to get revenge. And what I mean by that is if a bee stings you, you do not go after the hive with a stick, right, and start hitting the beehive. Why? Because you're stirring up trouble, right? You're just going to get stung more and more. Isn't that right? You know, this beehive principle is so important in our families. Please go to the book of Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, as we understand what this beehive principle is, we don't want to stir up trouble. Isn't that right? It's rather foolish. And so the book of Proverbs, Psalms, Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, we're going to start in verse 1. Just one verse. Proverbs 15, verse 1. And the word of God says, In the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. A harsh word stirs up anger. You know, when it's easy to be angry with someone when they are angry back at you. Isn't that right? (laughs) Come on, beloved, you know what I'm talking about. Now, here's the thing. If if someone says something incorrect to you, it doesn't matter if it's your spouse or if, if you're not married, it doesn't matter. Anyone, when they say something rude or something you don't like to you, you know, and if you say something rude back to them, it's breaking the beehive principle. What it's doing is you're getting that stick, and you're hitting the beehive, and you're stirring up trouble. That's why the Bible says a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word, it stirs up anger. You know, brothers and sisters, it makes no sense to start speaking unkind words back to someone. In fact, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, and when he was being mocked and beaten, you know, no one had a better right to say something rude than Jesus on the cross, right? Because he was blameless. He was dying for them, right? But do you know he didn't say one unkind word back to those people there? In fact, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And so here's the thing. Jesus Christ proved, beloved, that there is never a right time to give a person a piece of your mind. Do you understand that? (laughs) And so we need to follow Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, which says a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Please also turn in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 29, as we learn another principle of how to bring about restoration in our families. Proverbs chapter 29, same book, chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11, and I'm going to combine this with the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. I know you can't turn in two places at once, but Uh, The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 11, and then I'm going to read Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 9. 
And here the Word of God tells us in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11, it says, A fool vents all his emotions, but a wise man holds them back. And then it says, Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. You know, if you go to a psychiatrist today, if they don't, if perhaps that they don't know God, they might tell you to vent out all your emotions. Have you ever heard that before? Just let it out, right? But you know, the book of Proverbs right here, it says, a fool vents all his emotions. Mm. <laughs> we don't want to be foolish, right? A fool vents all his emotions, but a wise man holds them back. And so we should not allow all our anger to come out of us. It's not the right principle, brothers and sisters. You know, I'm talking about today about really our tongues. And so I encourage you to go with me in your Bibles to the book of James, chapter 1, as we see just how important it is regarding what we speak. James, chapter 1, verse 26. Because we might say, that's nice, but, you know, sometimes I just want to say something to someone. But, you know... <laughs> The Bible in the book of James gives us such a great warning on why this topic is oh so very important. James chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 26. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 26, If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Wow. Wow. Do you understand what that means? Let me give you a, a, a quote, uh, which is really talking uh, on the same subject. From Adventist Home, page 437, it says, We must, we must subdue a hasty temper and control our words. And in this we shall gain great victories. Unless we control our words and temper, we are slaves to Satan. We are in subjection to him. He leads us captive. Wow. You know, America has a dark history of slavery, right? And slavery is a horrible thing, amen? You know, in slavery, they used to bind people up with chains, right, in America. And here, this, this says right here that we are slaves to Satan if we allow Satan to control our temper. In fact, the Bible confirms the statement in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 16, when it says, do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. You know, when we give our temper over to Satan, we become his slave. You know, some of us here today, we say, Lord, I've been a slave of Satan. I've been bound. But beloved, whatever chains Satan has bound you with, Jesus Christ can break. Amen? If you struggle with your tongue, if you struggle with your temper, Jesus Christ can give you the victory. We can indeed do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? The question is, how? Have you ever wondered that? How do I control my words? Because we've all been tempted to anger, all right? right? So how do we control our words? Please go to the book of Matthew, chapter 12. Matthew, chapter 12. Jesus gives us the answer on how the key of controlling our tongues the key of how to control our tongues. Matthew chapter 12. And I'm going to look at verse 34. Here's Jesus. He's speaking to the Pharisees. And we want to learn what controls our tongue. The Word of God says in Matthew 12, 34, Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so here's the thing. Jesus Christ said that in order to control our tongues, it comes from our heart. It comes from our heart. Are you still with me? Amen? You know, when he says brood of vipers, he wasn't being... You know, Jesus, love is not rude, amen? And so when Jesus says brood of vipers, it was with tears in his eyes that he said that to those Pharisees. Why did he say brood of vipers? Have you ever wondered that? That's pretty, pretty intense, right? You know, a viper is a snake, right? One of the most dangerous snakes in the planet. And you know why it's so dangerous? Because it kills with its mouth. It kills with its mouth. And so when Jesus said, brood of vipers, he said, look, you're murdering people with your words. Do you know that we can murder people with our words, brothers and sisters?